know, here in, in Exodus 2, 3, and 4, we have what I believe to be some of the most beautiful imagery in the scriptures. I know we all know this story, but we see here in Exodus 2 how God looks down and hears the groaning of his people when they're in bondage and slavery. But it's interesting that in 224 it says that he remembers his covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What caused the cries of the people to touch his heart in such a deep way to where he looks now to raise up the deliverer that he has had in training is his remembrance of the fact that he covenanted with a man. He gave a man a promise and he entered into a deep heart-to-heart -heart covenant with a man. And the fact that this man was the father of a nation that he himself sought covenant with that would in essence introduce his covenant son to the nations. And we know that God had had at that point Moses in the wilderness for 40 years after living in a palace and being trained and being educated by Pharaoh and the system of Egypt for 40 years. He takes this man and he puts him on the backside of the wilderness for 40 years. And for 40 years, he's stripping layer after layer of any bit of trust he might have in what he himself had accumulated from the, from the systems and the schools of the strength and the might and the wisdom of this world. Any trust he might have in himself, in and of himself, just like we know at the very foundation of the kingdom of God, when Jesus teaches on a Sermon on the Mount, blessed are the poor in spirit, and upon that everything else is built. He's stripping Moses of any, any bit of wealth he might have outside of dependency upon him. But when we look at this passage in Exodus chapter three, Moses is walking, it says in Horb, the mountain of God, and the angel of the Lord possesses a bush with fire. What, what exactly is so significant about a bush? There's nothing at all significant about a bush on the backside of the wilderness. In the very encounter, God is showing Moses the nature of what he's seeking to establish in a covenant people. People who would not find significance in a beautiful vast tree. It's a bush that is bearing the very life and energy and fire of God. That is, he was staring at a sign and a wonder that bore the image of what he himself, God himself, would make Moses to be. He was staring at what Jesus himself was seeking to make him into, what God himself made Abraham into. And he says, I must turn aside and see what the voice is speaking. And in the encounter, of course, we know that he takes off his shoes and he says, this is holy ground. Why was it holy? He's on the backside of the wilderness where there's sheep grazing where there's nothing but sheep and, and, and of course, you know, animals and what animals do. But in the moment he recognized what makes this place holy is the fact that God is present in the moment. And in the moment he's speaking, this is holy. God is here and he's saying something. And he turns aside, of course, God endows him with a sign and a wonder. And on the way, here we go, on the way after the encounter, He's walking and it says in Exodus chapter four, many people look, look at this passage and actually pass over this passage. That he's walking on the way and it says in verse 21, 421, the Lord says to Moses, when you go back to Egypt you perform these signs and wonders on and on and on. Verse 24, it comes about that at the lodging place on the way the Lord met Moses and sought to put him to death. And right away Zipporah, his wife, understood why. So she took a flint knife and cut off her son's foreskin and threw it at Moses' feet and said, indeed, you are a bridegroom of blood to me. And so then the Lord, it says, uh, or, or from that time forth, he is known as the bridegroom of blood because of the circumcision. What's so interesting about that is the fact that when God covenanted with Abraham, the circumcision and blood represented just that, covenant. What is, why did God hear the cries? Because of the covenant promise he made to a man and the covenant he sought with a nation. That would look like what? That would look like a people like Moses, stripped of any self-confidence or self-dependence or the things that caused to, 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 uh, this world to go round and, 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 and the applause that men give, the strength of man, so that we ourselves would, would look like a a bush insignificant at all in and of ourselves but that hosts divine life that burns with purity and beauty and humility and love and that looks like covenant Moses is called out by God to deliver a people from slavery and captivity and he's endowed with a sign and a wonder and is given a voice but if he himself does not tie into covenant with the Lord 
to where he's establishing covenant in his body, in his family, and he presents that to the people, God says, I would rather do without you. 40 years invested, 40 years invested, a sign, a wonder, and a voice. If you don't walk in covenant, I'll raise up another man. We'll start over again. Because God is after the finished product. And this is what God is after. To raise up a people who bear his image in a covenant way, who would not trust in themselves, but would bear the image of the bridegroom who has liberated us by his blood.